everyone. Uh, welcome to Geo Traveler Media Academy. I am Lola Kimade, and I am super excited to have Corey Muntz with us. Corey is an incredible astrophotographer based in northern Sweden, and Corey is our on-the-ground local expert uh, when we travel and do our aurora experiences in that region. So, Corey, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, that's very sweet of you. Uh, yeah, I, I've uh, been doing astro now for about 10 years and I've uh, actually lived here in the north of Sweden for going on seven years now. Uh, so I'm uh, very much aware of, of what life is like up here in the cold and dark and uh, I just love it. And it's the perfect spot uh, for astrophotography, uh, which makes it very easy for me to be out and about taking pictures. Absolutely. And if you haven't seen... Uh... Corey's Northern Lights Photography. We're going to have links, you know, in the caption so you can check out his work. And we're always super excited to work with Corey. And we've got two experiences next winter. So January and February, we're going to be going back up twice. Corey's going to be our local guide and we're going to go chasing the Northern Lights. Now, the Northern Lights have been on many people's bucket lists for years. And it's one of those once in a lifetime experiences. And just recently, We've had this incredible solar uh, event. Corey, can you just tell us all about that and what that means and what that means for astrophotography? Yeah, so actually over the last couple of weeks, uh, there's been quite a lot of solar activity. Uh, starting a few weeks back, we had a, for me especially, the most color I've ever seen wow. uh, was up here about three weeks ago. We had a mass coronal uh, ejection and yes. it, it was just red as far as you could see That's with crazy. the naked eye and everything. And it's not so often you get so much color with the naked oh, eye. Wow. But uh, even this week we had a, ge a geo storm and it was just every night was was really, really lovely. And I mean, yeah, for me, I have family up here right now. Oh, and the God. first night we were here, it was a little bit shy, but it was before it even got dark. It was, it was over the top of us and it was just magnificent. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, it's been really, really intense these last few weeks, which is oh, great wow. because now we're... Heading into the end of the season, mm. you know, the end of March, now we're starting to lose the darkness. So it's been really, really nice to have that big push the last few weeks where it's, the activity is just amazing. And you don't have to freeze so much now because it's only you exactly. know, March, freeze, which is great. Absolutely. And, and you know, NASA was talking about this last year. They said the next two years are going to be the strongest, you know, Aurora activity. And people yeah. are like, okay, that's cool. Let's go up there. And then obviously they knew what they were talking about with this. With these yeah, storms, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 No, it's been uh, really great. And uh, yeah, I, I am really looking forward to next season. Uh, see what next year can can produce. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, and so, that, so what we've done, we've done is we've created kind of two sessions. So we're going to go up in January and then another session in February because those are the best months, right? Like the strongest months yeah. for... Yeah. And it's more so just the fact that it's dark. I, I mm. mean, January... The end of January will have very little sunlight. We, we may have six hours a day of sunlight. And so it just creates more opportunity uh, to get out there and actually see the Northern Lights, uh, mm -hmm. which is amazing. And I mean, January is coming out of the polar night and it is really, really a beautiful time of year. I mean, it's one of my favorite times of year uh, because everything's really nice and crisp and fresh and you really get those those winter landscape photos that, that people are really looking for. And I mean, the same in Feb. In February, the, the weather can be a little bit warmer and more forgiving, and you'll get yeah. a lot more sunshine back, which I, I assume some people will prefer, That's but true. you're still <laughs> looking at 16 hours of, of darkness. So it's yes. still a really, really nice time uh, to be out and about looking for northern lights. So If we can breathe like minus 40, I, because I had... It's <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> That's when you look them. at the lights from inside the house through the windows. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 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 So I want to just share a little bit about the experiences we have, you know, and kind of how we work with you. Yeah. And so, you know, we we start in Kiruna and Kiruna is, I think, Sweden's northernmost city. Yeah. Right. And so just tell us a little bit about Kiruna. So Kiruna is is a bit of a special town. It's an, an industrial town uh, centered around a very large mine that we have up here. Uh, but surrounding that mine is a lot of culture and activity, which is really, really lovely. So it's it's a nice place to come, not only for for the nature aspects, but if you want to learn about a bit of a culture clash between you know the new and the old kind of thing. Mm. So there's a lot of learning to be done in Kirana, but 
Uh, if you're not so interested in that, there is lots of activities to do around town. There's, there's, you know, you have the dog sledding and the reindeer sledding and the snowmobiles and the Northern Lights and stuff. So yes. it's it's really a special place. Yeah, no, absolutely. And one of the things we do once we land in Corinna is every single night, you know, we're going to go on hunting for Northern Lights, trying to uh, maximize our opportunities. But during the day, we have, you know, we have lectures just to teach you about the best way to photograph and capture the lights, but also... Like Corey said, you know, um, dog sledding. So we do that. We learn a little bit about indigenous Sami culture. You know, we go reindeer sledding with with Nuti Sami Sida. One of my favorites is we actually have like a spy experience at, uh, you know, we go to the ice hotel, but we also have a spy experience. And we go uh, deep in, in the frozen river, which is fun. <laughs> so that's special. always cool. And then after a couple of days in Kiruna, then we head up to... Up to Arbiskoa. Yeah. So tell us about Arbisko, one of my absolute favorite places in Sweden. So it's really nice. It's about an hour and a half north of Kiruna. And that's when you really get up into the mountains. Uh, and so the viewing you get up there is spectacular, especially compared to, to Kiruna because Kiruna is a little more flat. But up in Arbisko, then you, yeah, you're getting up nice and into the mountains. And uh, the mountains create a very lovely little weather reserve that keeps all the bad weather away. And so the weather comes in off the coast of Norway and it, it kind of passes around Arbuskor. Uh, so it's usually a lot more clear up in Arbuskor. Mm. So for the Northern Lights, it's the perfect spot. Yeah, Really nice yeah. landscape photos with some aurora and usually a little clearer than we get yes. down here. So it's yes. really a special spot. And and they've got it's got that infamous uh, blue oil, you know, like you said. Yeah. Um, where yep. where I think it's the wind coming off of the North Sea condensing on the mountains and then it keeps yep. the leeward side a little bit clear for us. Yeah. And so when we get up to Abisko, again, we do more activities. We go uh, chasing other lights. We've got snowmobiling. But one of the most exciting activities is actually taking the chairlift. <laughs> 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 yes <laughs> up the mountain i i think that's that's one of those experiences that you just have to do it while you're yeah. up there you just have to do it because there's nothing like riding a snow chairlift mm. that's wide open right up the face of a mountain close to what past 9 p.m at night 9 10 yeah. p.m at night yeah uh up like you're ascending into heaven up mount no <laughs> no yeah but also, um, yeah, just tell us a little bit about that experience. So, I mean, that's, that's yeah, really special. Uh, it's nice and clear and dark and calm and I would hope for most people peaceful. Uh, and scary and, a little bit. It's a, it's yeah, a good mix. Well, that's it. It's, it's, it's the line between scary and peaceful for some. Yes. Uh, okay. But it really is a special thing to do because it's, it's, yeah, not so often you can take a chairlift, you know, if you're not yeah. skiing or something like that in the middle of the night to a yes. spot that's nice and calm to see Northern Lights. And I mean, you get a great view of it. Tornathrask and Arbiscore, things like that. So mm -hmm. it's it's really, really special, uh, provided, yeah, you, you're not too scared to do it. Exactly. But <laughs> no, yeah. no, but it, it is one of those. I think I've done that chairlift three times now, mm -hmm. you know, and each time it gets easier and easier, but it's still one of those things that um, puts life in perspective. That's all I say. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Yep. See, you know, it reminds you how small we are. Mm. But uh, so in terms of the Northern Lights, you know, NASA says the next two years are going to be the strongest auroras. And so what are the best conditions like for for, for the auroras, right? What are the best conditions? I mean, uh, first and foremost, just clear skies. You know, mm. it's it's it sounds very simple. And I, and I say this to everyone I speak to. Uh, don't focus so much on chasing the aurora and the aurora for forecast. Chase mm. the clear skies because it, it can be challenging at times. Uh, you know, if it's snowing or cloudy or things like that, the, the most important thing is you, you want to have the actual opportunity to see it and you need clear skies. And it sounds like a very simple thing. Uh, but otherwise, the solar activity is first and foremost what is going to create the aurora. Uh, and the solar activity is is ramping up at the moment, which has been really nice. And again, the, the end of this season has been spectacular. Yes. Uh, so let's hope that continues into next year. And yeah, with, yes. with, again, the easy, easy thing of finding clear skies, exactly. which can you know, sound very simple. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and good solar activity. So, I mean, they're the, 
the key ingredients we need and we can usually find around yeah, here somewhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and I think we've got this year and next year will be probably the be our best chances, you know, to, yep. to see them. And the great thing is that once you stay in a place for at least two to three days, you can at least see some of them, slivers yep. of them. Uh, and because it's true, right, that the strongest uh, auroras come 24 to 48 hours after an event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So the, yes. the, the day after, the second day after, and even that, they'll, they'll usually have a tail tail end really? of that as well. So if, if you have a strong event, you will have two or three, even four days if you're lucky. Of that's really nice Yes. Uh, so that's I'll, really good. Yeah. And one of the things we're going to do, we're also going to share is uh, kind of a link to to NASA and all to the sites where it tells us when an event has happened. Because mm. I think uh, that's one of the sites that Aurora photographers always follow and listen and yeah. check and see yeah. what's going on there. Uh, so as we're kind of wrapping up, what's one thing, like piece of advice you'll give people that are super interested in following us to go check out the Auroras? I mean, again, once in a lifetime thing, super exciting to, to experience in person, but what are some of the things you would tell people to keep in mind? Uh, definitely the weather. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's it's yeah. it's really really hard. I mean, you'll see these beautiful winter landscapes and astro shots and things like that, and they are spectacular. But they're usually very cold, and uh, yeah, I mean, you, you can gather that from the snow on the ground and and you know everything you hear. But I think that can be a little bit of a shock for people when they mm. first arrive, and and you know they come off the plane and it's minus twenty outside. Yes. Uh, it's it is cold. It's very yes. cold, and if you're out at night looking for lights, you need to be dressed appropriately. And not that that's an issue for us because we have all our clothes and everything. Yes. But with that said, you will still be cold. It's yes. it's, and I mean, it lets you know you're alive. I like exactly. to tell people it's it's yeah. Yes. And so it's it's some people absolutely love it. Some people are a little bit skeptical, but in the end, I like to think everyone leaves with a happy, warm heart. So yes. that's the most important thing. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And we will share, you know, for people that register a packing list, you know, so people know what to pack and how to bundle yeah. up. But I will share this, that even though I've been living in Sweden for 15 plus years now, and I've been up there many times, I actually got frostbitten this trip. Mm -hmm. My fingers, all the fingertips all got black. And so the skin slowly peeled off to get fresh skin back. So yes, even though I've been in this weather many times, I was just not paying attention this time and got my fingers uh, can happen yeah <laughs> so I, I will say it's happened to me quite a few times more yes. times than i care to admit but exactly. that's how it is. <laughs> yeah i admit it yeah nature uh, always reminds us but listen yeah. corey we're super super excited for our upcoming experiences you know if anybody has questions definitely share with us we'll we'll give you more details but it's Absolutely. going to be incredible because it's not just chasing the auroras every night it's also all the activities. I mean, we have a lot of activities, you know, dog sledding, reindeer sledding, everything. So it's just just an incredible, uh, incredible trip. So, yeah. uh, Corey, Absolutely. thank you so much for your time. You know, we can't My wait pleasure. to see you again up not next year. And uh, we're going to have uh, just two lovely groups of people. And everyone, we just keep it to six people because yeah. we want it to be a small, intimate group and have the best, absolute best experience uh, you know, possibly in, including bonding and getting to know each other. So yeah, thank you so much, Corey. Enjoy oh, all the oh, amazing you. lights you're currently getting. Oh, I, I am shall, jealous. Yes. I am jealous <laughs> or whatever. And uh, just thank you so much and we'll see you soon. Excellent. Sounds good. Um, thank you for joining All right. Me. All right. Thank you, Corey. Bye.